14 years earlier, when they were students in her third grade classroom, ABC News filmed a two-day exercise for a documentary, The Eye of the Storm. Now, at their request, they will see that film again and relive the experience of her unique lesson in discrimination. This is a special week. Does anybody know what it is? National Brotherhood. National Brotherhood Week. What's brotherhood? Be kind to your brothers. Be, be kind okay, to be your kind to your brothers. Like you, you would like to be treated. Treat everyone the way you would like to be treated. Treat everyone as though he was your brother. brother. And is there anyone in this United States that we do not treat as our brothers? Yes. Who? Yes. The, the, black the, black black the black people. Who else? In Absolutely, the Indians. And when you see, when many people see a black person or a yellow person or a red person, what do they think? Uh, oh, look at that. Dumb people. And look at the dumb people. What else do they think sometimes? What kinds of things do they say about black people? Oh, uh, they're niggers, niggers. In the city, many places in the United States, how are black people treated? How are Indians treated? How are people who are of a different color than we are treated? Like they, like like they are part of this place. world. They don't get anything in this world. Like Why is that? Because they're different color. You think you know how that would feel yeah. to be judged by the color of your skin? Yeah. I don't, do you think you do? No, I don't think you'd know how that felt unless you had been through it, would you? <laughs> it might be interesting to judge people today by the color of their eyes. Would you like to try this? Yeah! Sounds like fun, doesn't it? Since I'm the teacher and I have blue eyes, I think maybe the blue-eyed people should be on top the first day. I mean, the blue-eyed people are the better people in this room. Oh, yes, they are. Blue-eyed people are smarter than brown-eyed people. <laughs> My dad isn't that I got stupid. Uh, is your dad brown eyed? Yeah. One day you came to school and you told us that he kicked you. He did. Do you think a blue eyed father would kick his son? Yeah. My dad. My dad. My dad's blue eyed. My dad's dad. blue -eyed. He's <laughs> never kicked me. Greg's dad is blue eyed. He's never no. kicked him. But Rex's dad, dad is blue eyed. Dad. He's never kicked him. <laughs> this is a this is a fact. Blue eyed people are better than brown-eyed people. Are you brown-eyed or blue-eyed? Blue. Why are you shaking your head? <laughs> are you sure that you're right? Why? What makes you so sure that you're right? I don't know. The blue-eyed people get five extra minutes of recess, while the brown-eyed people have to stay in. The brown-eyed people do not get to use the drinking fountain. You'll have to use the paper cups. You brown-eyed people are not to play with the blue-eyed people on the playground because you are not as good as blue-eyed people. Well, the brown-eyed people in this room today are going to wear collars so that we can tell from a distance what color your eyes are. On page... 127? 127. Is everyone ready? Everyone but Laurie. Ready, Laurie? Brown-eyed. She's a brown-eyed. You'll begin to notice today that we spend a great deal of time waiting for brown-eyed people. The yardstick's gone. Well, okay. I don't see the yardstick, do you? It's probably over there. Hey, Mrs. Lake, you better keep that on your desk so if the um, brown people, brown eyed people get out of hand. Oh, you think if the brown eyed people get out of hand, that would be the thing to use? Who goes first to lunch? Blue the blue eyed people. No brown eyed people go back for seconds. Blue eyed people may go back for seconds. Brown eyed I'm people not do not. Brown eyed. Don't you know? Mm. They're not smart. 
Is that the only reason? Might take too much. Okay, quietly. And it seemed like when we were down on the bottom, everything bad was happening to us. The way they treated you, you felt like you didn't even want to try to do anything. It seemed like Mrs. Elliott was taking our best friends away from us. What happened at recess? Were two of you boys fighting? Yeah. yeah. Russell and John were. What happened, John? Russell called me names and I hit him. Hit him in the gut. What did he call you? Brown eyes. Did you call him brown eyes? They always call us that. You yeah. want to get all of the um, yeah. boys call us that. Boys, they keep calling us brown eyes. They say, come here, brown eyes. Yeah. And they would have called us boys. I yeah. wasn't. Sandy, Sandy and Donna were. Yeah. What's wrong with being called brown eyes? It means that we're stupider. No, well, not that. Yeah. But oh, that's mean. just the same yeah. way as other people call uh, black people niggers. Yeah. Is that the reason you hit him, John? Did it help? Did it stop him? Did it make you feel better inside? Stop Russell. Make you feel better inside? Did it make you feel better to call him brown eyes? Why do you suppose you call him brown eyes? Right, because he has brown eyes. Is that the only reason? He didn't call him brown eyes yesterday, and he had brown eyes yesterday. Didn't he? Because we just saw Yeah, that. ever since you put those blue things on there. Yeah. Tease him. Kind of tease him. Oh, is this teasing? No. Well, he did it. Were you doing it for fun, to be funny, or were you doing it to be mean? I don't know. Don't ask me. Did anyone laugh at you when you did I watched what had been marvelous, cooperative, wonderful, thoughtful children turn into nasty, vicious, discriminating little third graders in a space of 15 minutes. Yesterday, I told you that brown-eyed people aren't as good as blue-eyed people. That wasn't true. I lied to you yesterday. The truth is that brown-eyed people are better than blue-eyed people. <laughs> Russell, where are your glasses? I forgot them. You forgot them, and what color are your eyes? Blue. <laughs> Susan Ginder has brown eyes. She didn't forget her glasses. Yeah. Russell Ring has blue eyes, and what about his glasses? He forgot them. He forgot them. <laughs> Yesterday we were visiting, and Greg said, Boy, I like to hit my little sister as hard as I can. That's fun. <laughs> what does that tell you about blue eyed people? They're naughty. In fact, they fight a lot. <laughs> the brown eyed people may take off their collars. And each of you may put your collar on a blue-eyed person. The brown-eyed people get five extra minutes of recess. You blue-eyed people are not allowed to be on the playground equipment at any time. You blue-eyed people are not to play with the brown-eyed people. Brown-eyed people are better than blue-eyed people. They're smarter than blue-eyed people. And if you don't believe it, look at Brian. Do blue-eyed people know how to sit in a chair? Very sad. Very, very sad. Who can tell me what contraction should be in the first sentence? Go to the board and write it, John. <laughs> Come on, let's do it again. Loosen up. Up, up, up. Come on. That's better now. Do you know how to make a W? Okay, write the contraction for we are. Now that's beautiful writing. 
Is that better? Yes. Brown-eyed people learn fast, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Boy, do brown-eyed people learn fast. Very good. Greg, what did you do with that cup? Will you please go and get that cup and put your name on it and keep it at your desk? Blue-eyed people are wasteful. Okay, you want to be timed this morning? Yeah. Abe. I use Orton Gillingham Phonics. We use the card pack. And the children, the brown-eyed children, were in the low class the first day. And it took them five and a half minutes to get through the card pack. The second day, it took them two and a half minutes. The only thing that had changed was the fact that now they were superior people. I thought you were going to give them more. You went faster than I ever had anyone go through the card pack. Over the why, why couldn't you get them yesterday? We were behind. We had the collars on. We you think the collars get, kept you? just through? keep thinking about those collars. Oh, and you couldn't think as well with the collars on. Four minutes and 18 seconds. I knew we weren't going to make it. How long did it take you yesterday? Three minutes. Three minutes. How long did it take you today? Four, four, four minutes and 18 seconds. seconds. What happened? One down. Why? What were you thinking of? This. I hate today. How do you do? I hate too. <laughs> because I'm blue-eyed. See, I am too. Mm -hmm. It's nothing, it's not funny, it's not fun, it's not pleasant. This is a filthy, nasty word called discrimination. We're treating people a certain way because they are different from the rest of us. Is that fair? No. no. Nothing fair about it. We didn't say this was going to be a fair day, did we? No. And it isn't. It's a horrid day. Okay, you ready? What did you blue people who are wearing blue collars now find out today? Oh, you feel I know what yeah. they felt like to yesterday. I did, too. How did they feel yesterday? Down. Like a dog on a leash. Yeah. It feels like, like a chain them up wherever you go. In the prison. Like you're chaining them out up in the prison. Like you're shot yeah. up and you're throwing the key away. Should the color of some other person's eyes have anything to do with no. how you treat them? No. no. All right, then should the color of their skin? No. Should you judge people no. by the color no. of their skin? No. no. You're going to say that today and this week, and probably all the time you're in this room, he'll say, no, Mrs. Elliot. No. Every time I ask that question, no, then no, Mrs. when you see a black man or an Indian or someone walking down the street, are you going to say, <laughs> look at that silly looking thing? No. no. Does it make any difference whether their skin is black or white? No. Or yellow? No. Or red? No. Is that how you decide whether people are good or bad? No. Is that what makes people good or bad? No. Let's take these collars off. Hey, don't stick yourself out You'd have to sort them out. You can What would you like to do with them? Throw them away. Go ahead. Go ahead. In the pit. Mrs. Ellen. <laughs> Now you know a little bit more than you knew yeah. at the beginning of this week? Yeah. Yes. A lot. Do you know a little bit more than you wanted to? Yes. yes. This isn't an easy way to learn this, is it? No. here together. Blue eyes and brown eyes. Does it make any difference what color you are? No. No. Down, girl. Down. Don't get to see him yet. Oh, you found your friend, huh? Oh, my friend. Did you get that? Okay, you ready to listen now? Okay, now are you back? Yes. That feel better? Yes. 
Does the color of eyes that you have make any difference in the kind of person you are? No! Mrs. Elliot! Does that feel like being home again, girls? Yes! Oh, wow, well, you can stop it! <laughs> this was the third time Jane Elliot had taught her lesson in discrimination. The first, two years earlier, was in April of 1968. On the day after Martin Luther King was killed, my, one of my students came into the room and said, they shot a king last night, Mrs. Elliot. Why'd they shoot that king? I knew the night before that it was time to deal with this in a concrete way, not just talk about it, because we had talked about racism since the first day of school. But the shooting of Martin Luther King, who had been one of our heroes of the month in February, could not just be talked about and explained away. There was no way to explain this to little third graders in Riceville, Iowa. As I listened to the white male commentators on TV the night before, I was hearing things like, who's going to hold your people together as they interviewed black leaders? Uh, what are they going to do? Uh, who's going to control your people? As though this was, these people were subhuman and someone was going to have to step in there and control them. They said things like, when we lost our leader, his widow helped to hold us together. Who's going to hold them together? And the attitude was so arrogant and so condescending and so ungodly that I thought if white male adults react this way, what are my third graders going to do? How are they going to react to this thing? I was ironing the teepee. We studied an Indian unit. We made a teepee every year. The first year, the students would make the teepee out of pieces of sheet. We'd sew it together. And the next year, we'd decorate it with Indian symbols. I was ironing the previous year's teepee, getting it ready to be decorated the next day. And I thought of what we had done with the Indians. We haven't made much progress in these 200, 300 years. And I thought this is the time now to teach them really what the Sioux Indian prayer that says, oh great spirit, keep me from ever judging a man until I have walked in his moccasins really means. And for the next day, I knew that my children were going to walk in someone else's moccasins for a day. Like it or lump it, they were going to have to walk in someone else's moccasins. I decided at that point that it was time to try the eye color thing, which I had thought about many, many times, but had never used. So the next day, I introduced an eye color exercise in my classroom and split the class according to eye color, and immediately created a microcosm of society in a third grade classroom. Riceville hasn't changed much in the 17 years since then. It's still a small farming community surrounded by cornfields. Its population is still under 1,000 and it's still all white and all Christian. And though Jane Elliott has continued to teach her lesson in discrimination, there's been little outward local reaction, no objections from school authorities or the parents of the 300-odd students who have by now been through it. Okay, let's, let's get in a circle. The reunion of her former third graders was Jane Elliott's first chance to find out how much of her lessons her students had retained. All right, now. Raymond, why? I want to know why you were so eager to discriminate against the rest of these kids. At the end of the day, I thought the miserable little Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> really, I just, I couldn't stand you. It felt tremendously evil. <laughs> you could, all your inhibitions were gone. And no matter if they were my friends or not, any pent up hostilities or aggressions that these kids had ever caused you, you had a chance to get it all out. I felt like I was a king, like I ruled them brown eyes, like I was better than them, happy. You know? And you did it all day. Yeah. How did you feel when you were the out group? Boy, that day after we went home, <laughs> and talk about hating somebody, yeah. it was there. You hated me. Yeah, of what you were putting us through. Nobody likes to be looked down upon. Nobody likes to be hated, teased, or discriminated against. And it just boggles up inside of you. You, you just get so mad. Were you just angry, or was there more than that? I felt demoralized, humiliated. Is the learning worth the agony? Yes. 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 It made everything a lot different than what it was. You, uh, we was a lot better family all together, even at our houses we was probably. Because uh, it, 
it was hard on you when you have your best friend one day and then he's your enemy the next. It brings it out real, real quick in you. I, I don't know if that's a Some of the remarks were the kinds of things I would have wished I could have programmed into them if I had been able to program them. They're the things I would have wanted them to say. Some of the things were just mind-blowing. You know, you hear these people talking about, uh, you know, different people and how they're, you know, they different and they'd like to have a model country. I wish they'd go back to Africa, you know, and stuff. And sometimes I just wish I had that collar in my pocket. I could whip it out and put it on and say, wear this and put your put yourself in their place. I wish they would go what I went, you know, do what I went through. We was at a softball game a couple weekends ago and there was a black you know, like, hi, bro, you know, and we hugged each other and everything. And some people really look just like, what are you doing with him, you know? And you just get this burning feeling, sensation in you that you just want to let it out and put them through what we went through to find out they're not any different. I still find myself sometimes when I see some people together and I see how they act, you know, I think, well, that's black. And then right in the next second, I don't even finish the thought. I'm saying, well, I've seen whites do it. I've seen other people do it. It's not just the blacks. It's everyone acts differently. It's just a different color is what hits you first. And then later, as I said, I don't even finish that thought before I remember back when I was like that. And then I remember not, you know, everyone acts the same way. It's just your way of thinking is the difference. Like when my grandparents or somebody and they start talking about old times and they say the Japs and all this and that and they start, you know, holding that against them, I think, how'd you like to have been them? Japanese Americans get thrown into this camp just because they happen to be part Japanese. You know, I, I just said, calm down and think about it. But when they get older, they set in their ways and they're not going to change. When you get older. <laughs> I'll be set in my ways, but they're different than their way. When people I was get absolutely older, enthralled. Sandy Dolman's statements that when my son comes home with the word nigger and the other things that he hears downtown, I say to him, listen, that isn't the way we judge people. You don't judge people by how they look. You judge them by what's on their inside, not their outside. I'm glad that she's teaching him not to hate because even though he does hear this from the other people, he, if he goes home and he thinks, well, oh, mom and dad, dad like the black people, I'm going to like them too. So I don't think he's going to pick nothing bad up out of it. You chose your husband well. <laughs> he chose me. You chose her well. <laughs> Little guess... kids will take and, you know, they'll listen to a lot of other people too, and so they're going to end up kind of confused over it. But you if know, she right keeps from on telling yeah. him. Is he See, going to he's be gonna... the kind of person you kids are, or is he going to be the kind who judge people by the Well, he'll know right, right f somewhat right from wrong. He'll know, you that, know that he won't. Like but he'll have the, the ideas. He won't be judging them by their color, but he won't know what we know fully, having been through it. He won't learn the color from The prejudice no, from us. He won't, he won't learn prejudice firsthand. Yeah. yeah. He'll he just... won't learn to be prejudiced from us. I mean, he, they won't learn to discriminate between people from us. They might, he might hear it from others, but never from us. Okay, what's it like to be married to somebody like that? <laughs> <laughs> when I was going to marry Sheila, I knew I, for my future that I was going into the military. At first, I thought, is she going to be able to handle being with all the different nationalities? And then I read the storm, read the, the book. A class divided. The class divided before we got married and before I joined the army. And I said, hey, she's not going to have any problems. Should every, should every child have the exercise or should every teacher? Everybody. Everybody, everybody, everybody not yeah. just. Everybody. I think every school ought to implement something like this program in their, in their early stages of education. If Jane Elliott's lesson in discrimination changed the way these young people feel about discrimination and racism, it also had a totally unexpected result. The second year I did this exercise, I gave little spelling tests, math tests, reading tests, two weeks before the exercise, each day of the exercise and two weeks later. And almost without exception, the students' scores go up 
on the day they're on the top, down on the day they're on the bottom, and then maintain a higher level for the rest of the year after they've been through the exercise. We sent some of those tests to um, Stanford University, to the psychology department, and they did a sort of an informal review of them. And they said that what's happening here is kids' academic ability is being changed in a 24-hour period. And that isn't possible, but it's happening. Something very strange is happening to these children because suddenly they're finding out how really great they are, and they are responding to what they know now they are able to do. And it, it has happened consistently with third graders. The film made of Jane Elliott's third graders in 1970 has been widely used with students and teachers, and by government, business, and labor organizations concerned about human relations. 